move the valve into the open position. Loosen the connecting screws of the valve actuator and valve body diagonally and remove them. Carefully lift the valve actuator off the valve body. Move the valve actuator into the closed position. In the case of manual valves, ensure that the compressor is still in the outer guide. Caution! In some valve variants, the compressors are inserted loosely in the housing and can fall out when removing the diaphragm. A load distribution disc is inserted between the compressor and valve spindle in valves with a plastic compressor. This disc must always be fitted again. For diaphragm sizes 10 to 300, the shutoff diaphragm is screwed into the compressor with a set screw. Carefully unscrew the shutoff diaphragm out of the compressor of the valve actuator counterclockwise. Do not use a tool for this. In the case of two piece PTFE shutoff diaphragms, the PTFE shield must be turned to the front before unscrewing. It's then unscrewed counterclockwise from the compressor and removed. Afterward, remove the diaphragm backing which is now free. Inspect the diaphragm, the valve actuator or bonnet and the valve body for damage and impairments. Record the exact valve or parts characteristics. If need be, purchase new original parts. If a change is envisaged to the valve actuator, valve body, connection geometry or diaphragm version, the modification must be recorded in the system documentation. Diaphragm sizes 10 to 80 are rectangular. Diaphragm sizes 100 to 300 are round. Both versions can be fitted in two positions. All shutoff diaphragms have a sealing bead on the sealing surface, which later has to correspond to the position of the sealing weir in the valve body. Before assembling the diaphragm, remove the protective cap from the threaded pin. Do not use a tool when pulling off. There are two different compressors and compressor guides, version A and B, in stainless steel valves with a stainless steel compressor. Version A has a compressor with two external guide pins, the housing having corresponding guide grooves. Version B has a compressor with two guide grooves, the housing having corresponding guide rails. When inserting the compressors, always ensure that there is no side tilt. A load distribution disc is inserted between the compressor and valve spindle in valves with a plastic compressor. This disc must always be mounted. Some valve versions have an anti-twist protection on the end of the spindle above the compressor due to their design. The locking pin must lock exactly into the recess on the compressor ends when assembling the compressor. If the valve spindle is not in the right position, it must be turned clockwise to the right position with a suitable tool. 
The position of the anti-twist protection is offset to the position of the compressor guide by approximately 45 degrees. Move the valve actuator into the closed position. In the case of manual valves, ensure that the compressor is still in the outer guide. Carefully screw the shutoff diaphragm clockwise by hand into the compressor of the valve actuator. The shutoff diaphragm must be screwed in until frictional resistance can clearly be felt. Do not use a tool or lubricants. Use mechanical or chemical lock washers. Turn back the shutoff diaphragm until the hole patterns of the flange and shutoff diaphragm match. Do not turn back further than 180 degrees. In two-piece PTFE shutoff diaphragms, first place the elastomer backing on the compressor and actuator flange with an exact fit. Then invert the PTFE shield and screw in clockwise with the threaded pin until a clear frictional resistance can be felt. Turn back until the hole pattern of the flange and shutoff diaphragm match. Do not turn further than 180 degrees. Afterward, fold back the PTFE shield. Move the valve actuator to the open position. Align the valve actuator and place on the valve body so that the compressor is aligned with the sealing weir of the valve body. The sealing bead on the diaphragm surface must also correspond to the sealing weir of the valve body. Carefully place the valve actuator with the mounted shutoff diaphragm on the valve body and evenly fit the bolting diagonally by hand. Only put on the screws and do not tighten yet. Move valves operated by motor and pneumatically into the closed position and manual valves into the half-closed position. Tighten the screws diagonally in a minimum of three steps with a suitable tool. The shutoff diaphragm must be compressed parallel between the flanges by 10 to 15 percent of its original thickness. Afterward, the shutoff diaphragm must exhibit a uniform outer curvature around the circumference. Now test the valve for functioning and tightness. If no impairments are discernible, the valve can be put into operation again. If the valve is leaking or exhibits functional faults, it must be removed again, examined and reassembled. Owing to the setting behavior of elastomers, the compression of the shutoff diaphragm must be checked and, if necessary, retightened before putting the system into operation. This must also be done after the first sterilization. We recommend checking the valves regularly in operation. After each time the diaphragm is changed and the shutoff diaphragm retightened, the position of the opening limits and seal adjusters, travel sensors of electric position indicators, as well as position and process controllers must be checked when putting into operation and, if necessary, readjusted or recalibrated. Always follow the operating and assembly instructions for this. Half open the manual valve. Lift the protection cover off the handwheel at the recess with a small flat-bladed screwdriver and remove. The minimum flow or sealing position is set by turning the silver-colored screw to the left or right. 
the stroke limiter is set by turning the green screw to the left or right. Check the set positions by operating the hand wheel and if necessary correct. Place the protection cover back on the hand wheel. It has locking fins on the inside for the two adjusting screws, which must lock into place with an exact fit.